to another episode of Beer for Breakfast ABV. My name is Danielle and I do mornings on 91X. As always, I have my beer drinking partner in crime with me, Paul Segura, brewmaster from Carl Schraus. Aloha. And uh, this individual right here, I feel like you need no introduction. I feel like everybody knows you, but I'm gonna do yeah, it yeah. anyway. Yeah. This is Lee Chase. This right. is the master brewer, master of everything from automatic brewing, also <laughs> blind lady. The Lee Chase. The Lee Chase. Thank you. Uh, He's one of the OGs of the San Diego brew scene. If you guys <laughs> don't know who Lee Chase is, what have you been doing with your life living under a you know, rock i don't get out What's much so yeah it's not uh, <laughs> you do keep surprised. a low profile yeah you know? but you make good beer you've been around thanks it's I think been, a, it, been a good community to grow up know, in. i mean certainly yeah you've like you kind of set the vibe early for the scene you he was the og brewer at stone back in the day i, I don't know how many, how many people know that dude i know well it's like uh, <laughs> i haven't been there for more than 10 years now though mm -hmm. so that's kind of like well it's easy to not know because <laughs> And also, it's who, who's the current brewmaster of Stone right now? Nobody. Mm. So, like, were you the, so were you the last, technically the last brewmaster? No. Or? So when I left, um, Mitch Steele, who uh, uh, uh -huh. he was there for the ten years following my kind of tenure uh, before him, and then he uh, he left, and they said, all right, well, we're we're good. So, mm. and well, the uh, owner Steve Wagner was the original brewmaster. So, right. I think he yeah. might still consider himself brewmaster. I don't know. I hope so. Anyway. Uh, I think it's nice. Uh, you know, I'm sure he has plenty of say so and he should probably just hold that title uh, keep it in his on his business card at least right? sure well you know what else you are Lee you are the MacGyver of brewers we uh, got to go to automatic brewing it's right there in Bl at blind lady ale house which I had no idea you know you've been to blah you go in fantastic beer amazing pizza but little did you know there is a brew system back there and it was one of the coolest experiences I have ever seen. Thanks. I've been to a lot of breweries, I've seen a lot of setups, and I've never seen a setup quite like yours it's, before. It's unconventional, uh, but I think when you're, when you're working, you know, at my early days at Stone and with some startups beforehand, you had to be pretty innovative and work with uh, almost like no real budget and on time frames that don't allow for, like this is before the internet had uh, things that you could get easily so it was like phone books and calling people but mostly calling out to a friend and saying hey this thing broke I need to MacGyver something to get through <laughs> today and I think uh, growing up in that kind of scenario with a lot of growth or in the early days at Stone was like fix that it's broken build this we need something right now and that kind of uh, worked with my I guess my my skill set and so this brewery became kind of an extension of that just like what do we got and how do we make beer with uh, yeah. The, with the limitations and with the uh, the things that we can. So. Well, the reason that we were at Automatic Brewing is we uh, did a collaboration beer with Automatic and Fall Brewing for the Adams Avenue Street Fair. Adams <laughs> Avenue Street Fair is this weekend, and this is awesome because <clears throat> a portion of the proceeds are going to be going to John Adams Elementary School right there in the neighborhood. So that is really, really cool. So this is actually my first time trying. Um, I would love to say that I really did anything for this brew. I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I was eating pizza and drinking beer the whole time. I'm not going to lie, but shout out to, you know, Bill, Dan, Nicole, you, Jeff. All of you guys did phenomenal on this brew. So let's try this. Cheers. 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 Good Stoked to have you on the show, show, man. Thanks. Uh, Ooh. So hoppy? we're looking at a uh, double okay. dry hopped IPA. Centennial hops. A lot of centennial. Mm -hmm. I get the centennial. Yeah, there's centennial. There's a the cryo eucanot and uh, what else is in there? Uh, maybe a little bit of a chinook. I think was in there. For I get a lot of touching. lemon. Mm -hmm. I get mm -hmm. a lot of herbs too. Yeah. Like well, we also really kind nice. of made a little uh, late contribution of had a whole bunch of passion fruit that came from the yard and so we just scooped out the passion fruit and threw that in there nice and then I had a bag of uh, organic dried mango and so we just threw that in there too so we try to like tropical it up on the fly with uh, the things that were sitting around and <laughs> like thing, this, it's was, not hurt. this was one of the coolest things about the brew day this is my first brew day ever and I thought that this was probably the best one mm. to ever be my first <laughs> but that's what it was like you're like hey I've got you know got these passion fruits we can, I don't know what's gonna do but let's go to that. <laughs> like it was Probably like, it's not like, gonna let's, hurt. Let's, let's throw no. some of this. Let's throw some of that. It was right. one of the coolest 
best experiences. It's, I mean, they're called passion fruit. They're not like uh, gonna fuck you up fruit, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, right. it's not gonna kill you. And it, I mean, that's a characteristic that you kind of see in, in beers these days. It's like this great tropical fruit character coming from hop varietals usually. Right. And usually from like Southern Hemisphere stuff and New Zealand and such like that. But these are, you know, passion fruits are growing in the yard and I can pick them up uh, while I'm getting malt and all this other stuff from the yard, and let's just take it over there, and we'll see if we can use it in the beer. Maybe so it's cool. Why not? Smells, mm -hmm. smells delicious on the outside, and it tastes great on the inside, so, you know, it's and not going to hurt. I can't think of uh, two better breweries to get involved in. You guys in fall. It was really fun. We are driving to Automatic Brewing, and we see these guys on bicycles. And I was like, wait, I recognize that logo. That is a fall logo. All of the guys from fall loaded the hops onto their bicycles and rode it over to automatic. Yeah. That was one of the coolest things ever. It was really cool. I mean, we're not that far away, probably, I don't know, eight blocks or so. So they're kind of our, our nearest neighbor brewery. And uh, we've worked with them the whole time they've, they've been around and stoked that they're down the street. And so this is a nice collab because they're they're also right by the school, mm -hmm. and so this whole, like, let's try to do something to raise some money for the school. The school's going to use the money to build gardens for kids to learn how to grow food. So we kind of uh, said, hey, let's all get into this together and make something rad. Do so. you think that maybe uh, in the future we'll see some of those vegetables on pizzas at Blind Lady House? Yeah, or maybe like a side dishes or such. And I think next year we might even be able to take some of the fruit or some of the agriculture they have from their yard and put it into a beer. So we can design a beer based on Do you on like how we're, we're already planning next year? I love this. <laughs> so, yeah. We're already planning out next year. So this beer, we don't, we don't have a name for it yet. How we're about MacGyver? Oh, I kind of like that. Uh, this is Mystery Beer X is what I'm calling it at the moment until we have a name for it. But we will have a name by this weekend for Adams Avenue Street Fair. This beer will be available inside of Blind Lady Ale House. Uh, we will be live broadcasting there on Saturday of uh, Adams Avenue Street Fair. And then it's going to be available over at Panama 66 and Tiger Tiger as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll get it over there too. Awesome. So, nice. you know, you got options. But we brewed a very limited amount of this beer. So you got to get it right away. Don't wait around to try this beer. It shouldn't last long. 15 barrel brew house? Uh, 10 barrel Ten. fermenters and about an eight and a half barrel uh, max on the kettle. So I'm, okay. I'm doing like a, about a six and a half uh, one day and six and a half the next day and trying to like get every little bit of fermentation capacity out of the fermenter. So You know what I love about his brewery, mm. and I've been saying this for a long, long time, is that you see some brew houses that are just like, or breweries that are just put together right, using dairy equipment or whatever, mm -hmm. making some of the best beer I've ever had, and then you see like top of the line, no expenses spared breweries that, yeah. you know, unimaginative, you know, kind of mediocre stuff. Right. Um, I love it when I go to places like Lee's, mm -hmm. and I taste really good beer, and I know the equipment that it was made on, and it's challenging, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and, I, and I also, I think that that's kind of where uh, you guys we align very well with 91X as well, is, you know, we put it together. <laughs> if yeah. we mess up, we mess up locally, and you know that we messed up. <laughs> and the thing that I love about what we're doing next is, so I've got this lovely four pack, and we're not exactly sure which beer is which. So we're going to play beer roulette right now, and see, we know Wait, 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 you can spin it around. Yeah, there's nothing there. There's no label. <laughs> we have no hey. idea. It's one of two beers. Pick a beer, any beer. Should, should we spin the four pack? <laughs> All right. So it's either a Belgian blonde or it's a brown porter. Do we want to start guessing what this one is? Uh, we got a 50 50 chance. <laughs> oh. Hey, you should. No touching the merchandise. Uh, this, is like, this is like Christmas uh, when you go and shake the person. I think it's going to be the, the porter. You think it's the porter? I think it's the porter. Go the other way. You're going to go blonde. All right, yep. let's see. <laughs> I thought I felt a little less pressure on the canned side, but no. no. Well, and, and you canned these personally, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the other so, really yeah, yeah. cool part of this is you personally can these yourself. Like you're. We have, a, we have a small like can canning line that I kind of made out of some parts from. Uh, <laughs> it's just some parts. Let's just leave it at that. Of course you made and, it. <laughs> and it's like a one man foot operated canning little thing. And so this is the. Uh, I love I the just nose coming get off of it, this. So. I get bread, I get some mm. white pepper, so I get a little bit of sort of that Belgian musty yeah, aroma. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm. So this is a uh, this is a, a Belgian blonde that we brewed in collaboration with Gravity Heights and Skip Virgilio, the brewmaster there, is a longtime legendary. Shout out to Skip. Skip founded Ale Smith back in the uh, day after he had already been I PB Brewhouse. PB Brewhouses. I think he has the first Great American Beer Festival award given to San Diego County. I think you're right. Oh, I think it was wow. a Belgian double, I think it was. It was That's something cool. more gold though. I think it was this, I don't know, it was it was cuz we the idea for the collaboration was to make something that was in that vein and so we sat a Belgian triple with some uh, Meyer lemon zest and some ginger might be pretty cool. So we had to make this beer to get sturdy, healthy, ready to go yeast to handle a 10% alcohol triple. So this beer is the basically the, uh, the taking it easy on the yeast, but making the yeast ready to perform for a triple. Oh, it's and nice. it's just a nice so simple much beer. Science. Mm, yeah, well, so you it's know, good. propagating Chemistry. yeast prop. Mm -hmm. This is tasty. It is but, tasty. Um, it's just some a little bit of Czech sauce, hops, not much, letting the yeast kind of perform, do all the yeast characteristics that we like about Belgian beer, and single malt. It's just the Admiral Pilsner, and uh, Admiral malt is really cool because they make all the malt in Alameda in the Bay Area and they're growing all the barley in California so this is kind of like I don't know it hits a lot of the marks that we want to aspire to as a as a brewery and as restaurant owners try to use or you know use anything local and mm -hmm. try to make everything in-house. I feel like we haven't had a Belgian in a while. I think you're on, right. Yeah. On a beer for breakfast <clears throat> and I'm digging it because I kind of <clears throat> forgot how much I dig the funk. This is reminiscent of like the Harlot from Society, mm -hmm. and what's the other one? Benchmark had one, mm -hmm. uh, the table beer. Thorn, similar to Thorn's, uh, their foreplay Belgian blonde. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is good. Really, but I think this has a nicer malt profile, kind of a nice chewy, bready, and it's. I like the ester profile where it's at because it's not super phenolic or band aidy, but it's got yeah. a nice white pepper. It was uh, fermented a little cool for Belgian beer. Sometimes you can let a Belgian yeast just go nuts and like it'll get so hot, mm -hmm. it'll just produce all this, you know, almost like the, the sweatier the yeast gets, the more intense that uh, that character becomes, which is a weird analogy, but it kind of works. <laughs> sweaty yeast, yeah. yeah that's but probably ooh, sweat, not a... that, Sweaty yeast should be the next <laughs> band name of a bunch of brewers that get together. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> sweaty Actually, yeast. Actually, Lee and I have talked about jamming a couple uh, times. Adam's Avenue Street Fair next year. <laughs> Look out for sweaty yeast. <laughs> <laughs> and Lee and I will be on a stage playing, right? It's a um, sweaty yeast. He yeah. actually is a accordion player. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I'm not very good, but uh, I do have a lot of accordions, so <laughs> it's, uh, I Little known fact about Lee Chase. Gear. Uh, so how did you get into brewing beer anyway? Because um, it seems that you've been doing this before, you know, a lot of people in town were doing it. So there was, it's a it's kind of a funny story, and you know, flash forward a few minutes if you've already heard this, but uh, <coughs> Brewers <coughs> Union. <coughs> so as a, as a kid, I found a, a cookbook that was like a stapled together zine type cookbook that these kids had made in Arizona, and there's a, a bunch of like, I don't know, punk rock kids that were vegan, mm -hmm. and they made this kind of, like I said, DIY cookbook that was called um, Soy, Not Oi, 100 Recipes to Destroy the Government. <laughs> That's and, amazing! And it was like a combination of philosophy, um, music to listen to while you're cooking, and vegan recipes. So uh, I was going through this book and just totally inspired, and I was already vegetarian, and so somebody gave me this book, and I'm like, all right, well, that's 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 it. And so since I got that book, I've been vegan and a brewer, because one of the recipes in there was like, if you really want to screw the government, make your own beer, and it'll screw like corporate, uh, <laughs> corporate breweries, all the sexism and all the racism and all the shit that comes with corporate breweries is like, you can just skip all that and go straight to making your own jam. And I'm like, you can do that? That's like, like making your own gasoline or something. You know, this is like so, yeah. this is like in the, uh, maybe like 1990 or so. And I was just like blown away. So we went to the homebrew supply shop and said, hey, can we buy like the stuff to brew beer? And uh. like, we're 17. And the woman's like, we sell food products. I'm like, all right. will you sell them to 17 year olds though? <laughs> yeah. She's like, Did you go to Owen and Audrey? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. In, uh, yeah. East County. Yeah, beer and, and so we kind of got started, just some friends and I, just, you know, trying to, you know, fuck all those uh, bad things. That's so. so awesome, actually. Right. And then I got into like, 
homebrewing a lot. I started my older brother into homebrewing, and then he introduced me to the fact that UC Davis has a malting and brewing science program. So he's like, hey, if you want to go, I can help you get there, fund it. And uh, he had a career job already, so he's an Imagineer at Disney. Ah, and so he's like, cool. best job in the world. You can, you can, I can Aside help you get to Denver. school. I'm like, all right. So I got to go to UC Davis and do the malting and brewing science program there and then uh, come back to San Diego. Luckily, luckily San Diego was starting its, uh, you know, Carl Strauss had already like got the We kind of started rolling. out at about the same time, yeah, him yeah. and I. Yeah, oh. totally. And for similar I think reasons. We were at Davis like the next year, like right when I was out. And, uh, wow. and same deal, like Bush Sr. imposed all these like syntaxes, right? Alcohol, junk food, tobacco, all that stuff. And we all just said, screw you, man. We're going to make our own. Yeah. Oh you my know? God, that is amazing. Yeah. Like, same deal. Yeah, right. We kind of started out at the same time. That's super cool. It's a good way to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to decide which can I should, I should pick for our next. What are you guys feeling? Which one do you think it is? Just which, go which for it. Which one do we think it is? Ah. It's, uh, it's I'm thinking this. That one, okay. I'm feeling this I one. I think that was prob that'll probably be it. I'm right feeling there. this one. Let's see Damn. what this is. Otherwise, we're drinking the Belgian blonde again. <laughs> Woo! Winner! Porter. Winner! Oh, wow. Yeah! Nice. That was, like, that was better odds. You time. know, this is probably <laughs> the proper progression, too, right? Yeah, um, I think so. Um, okay, I love the color on this. Yes, tell me all about this, Lee. What is this? So this is a beer uh, that just went on tap at Blind Lady. It hasn't even made its way over to Tiger Tiger Ooh. yet. Uh, and uh, was this a GABF beer? Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't put beers into GABF for competition because I I judge and I want to judge categories that I want to make. So I kind of like you're not allowed oh. to judge beers that you have you know uh -huh. the category that you're submitted into. So Two things, we don't make the same beer twice ever, so if the beer needs to get to the GABF and it's gone by the time competition comes around, we kind of violated the rules of the GABF. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So that doesn't really work for our program, unless we like hoard kegs and then put them on during the competition, which not really into. But if we can basically, in, inspired by beers tasting at the uh, competition, brings it back to home, and then I can probably make something that's you know, close so, to metal winning, I didn't but. know that you don't brew a beer twice. Right. Yeah. Time out. Yeah, no, like, like <clears throat> can you back up a little bit? You've made that? some good beers. Thanks. I've had a lot of good beers at your place that you've made. Why wouldn't you make a, a home run? Like, rebrew it if, um, if it's a home run? I don't know. Or is know, it just, like, you just want to try new stuff? Yeah, like, Let's maybe, see. you know, there's other things to do. Like, uh, that's... It's like, a, you know, you you want to be responsive to the environment, and if somebody else is, like, if somebody else is going to hit a home run, well, maybe you just want to hit a couple base runs to load it up, and then that guy's going to hit the home run, and then you, like, clean house, because, you you know, if everyone's hitting a home run, you're squandering the home runs. So if I know, if I know everyone's making killer some category in San Diego that I can get fresh, I'm gonna make the thing that's like not really being represented by other San Diego brewers. You know what? That makes that so, actually makes a lot of sense when I go into Blind Lady Ale House. No, that makes a lot of sense when I go into Blah because these styles of beers that you have on are not <laughs> styles that I see any place else. Right. Which I dig, you know, and even, even into the, even into the pizzas. You guys are doing stuff with the pizzas that I don't see anywhere else. Right, and that's kind of a response to to the like agriculture we can get like. What, what does a farmer have that is uh, in yeah. plentiful supply? and Or maybe even not even like, hey, we got a little of this. <clears throat> no one wants to buy it because it's not that much. But if you can do something with it, we don't want it to go to waste. And we'll, we'll respond to that and like pull that in, make something with it. And if it's not coming back around, that's fine. We're going to just make the best of what we got when we got it. And well, I think mm -hmm. some of the malt and some of the hops and some of the yeast, those are all kind of things that will build that, like what is going to be brewed this week? Mm -hmm. uh, what do we got? We got this and that and that. Okay, is there some, is there any there there? Maybe not. If there's not, let's move on to something else. Like skip that idea. It's not going to pan out. And so sometimes it's a matter of like, wow, oh, we got some some new malt. I love I love all the new malt that's available now from small malting companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's super different and unique and maybe not the thing that has been celebrated in the past with beer. Like hops weren't very celebrated until they got really good and now. Malt hasn't been all that celebrated, but it's getting really good. It's kind of it's a new be, thing, like yeah. a new trend, right? I yeah. mean, for a long time, we've all 
had really limited options when it came to malt. Mm -hmm. Now you've got these boutique malting companies that are popping up. Yeah, and making so like amazing malts. Really cool stuff. Yeah, and, and really flavorful different. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I craft like brewers making that. flavorful stuff. Imagine that. I know. I I told a malt company one time. I said, "We're doing all this fresh hop stuff. Like, you can go get fresh hops from a uh, hop vineyard and get it right into your brew house in like a day." And it has these unique characteristics that brewers are ex excited to celebrate. Why don't you do fresh malt? Like, get the malt straight yeah. to the brew house soon. And the guy just like blew me off. He's like uh, somebody from a major, major global malt company, and he's like, "No way, we're doing that. Don't even bring it up again because that is so outside of our box." I'm like, "Why?" What? But we're your customer. Like, yeah. don't you want to do something that we're excited about? And he's like. You can go stick it. I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> yep. Like, right. all right. And then now companies are doing it. So, so now you've got like Admiral Malt, um, Skagit Valley Malting Company. You've got Proximity outside of Denver. Yeah. There's some really ne cool Necker options, Grade man. is like small, doing some weird stuff out there. And then you can take it and make beautiful things like this. I don't know. It's kind of fun. Do you think, as we're chasing this porter, do you think that I could put this in my coffee mug in the morning and Garrett would have any idea that I'm drinking beer? Uh, having just Come said on. that, now I think know, he's going to have an idea. It's looking kind of right. coffee-y. He watches yep. this show. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It no, has a nice delicious. coffee-like aroma. Yeah. And then you a, taste it, it's got a really nice, pleasant toastiness. I wouldn't say roastiness, no. but toast. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's kind of restrained on the roast character, but there's, a, there's some, a lot of dark malts kind of contributing to... That, that subtle, almost roasty, but more on the toasted side. Oh, it's definitely, in this glass, it looks a little more brown. It's not than, quite dry, not quite sweet. Black, it's but beautiful. In our normal, we do like a, a 21 and a half ounce glass. Because you guys and don't mess black. around at Right, like, hey, you know, <laughs> you're going to have a beer, you know, commit. Uh, so it's a little darker in that, in that bigger glass, but this is a, it's a, brown, this. It's a brown porter, which is on the less robust. There's a robust porter and there's a brown porter. Uh, probably a few different iterations depending on what part of the world you're into. But uh, this is kind of like meant to be like the malt character is there. It's not overly roasty, mm -hmm. it's not super bitter. Uh, it's just kind of a nice, I don't know, I, this is on the drier side probably. It's like not super sweet, but I like really dry beers. I don't like the. Do you think this would be like a pre prohibition stuff. porter? Yeah, maybe. I, I, I kind of like was mentally thinking of it as like, an imperial dark mild, yeah. which is like not It kind really of defies a thing, classification a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like that too. And porter usually is like, you know, roasty or that roast character is usually there without. Yeah. It's like chocolate is a really big thing. You get some chocolate and coffee. There's notes cocoa. In here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cocoa and toast. I freaking love this beer. I do too. I would drink this all day. Right, same. And it, coming in at 5.5%, the thing that I like about all three of these beers is they come in that mid 5% range. So yeah, yeah. it's got, you know, it's got a little bit of both behind it, but you can have numerous and right, right. it's not going to just totally floor you. For the totally. Beer. Yeah, and we, like I said, we serve beer in kind of maybe extra large glasses, which actually adds up. Like, a, mm -hmm. we, we have this kind of campaign about a, like, Cheater pints, like cheater pints are a thing, and so we, we're on the honest pint side of things. And we even go, like, not just as a 16 ounce pint, we're doing like a basically, it's more like when you get the glass, it's 18 ounces or so, because we put foam on top mm -hmm. of the beer. Mm -hmm. So we buy a glass that will allow for us to put foam and not rip people off. So that's awesome. It's like the. That's huge. Like, so, you know, let us, okay. Let us, let us do the thing that'll make you I love your Lee because he's, he's always teaching people and coaching, and he's been doing it forever. But actually, the foam is good stuff. There's mm -hmm. bubbles popping and there's aromatics being released and people who fill the like glass to the rim with no oh, foam no. are like, depriving they're depriving people of that sensory experience, mm -hmm. man. You know? Totally. And I think it's there's a there's a the Germans make a really nice glassware which accommodates for foam. Huh? Like they they build <laughs> the glass taller than the serving size yeah. so they can put foam on it and they put no a one line on plain. It. And it's like Hey, you're ripping me off with that foam. It's like, no, I built the glass extra tall to put the foam on I'm it. Yes. Yeah. I'm yes. doing you a favor. I'm doing you a favor. And I, I subscribe we want to that. You to get the full flavor and aroma of the beer. Yeah. Right. Like, I like that. Pay for the amount you're going to buy, but we're going to take the pride in the presentation and, and the experience to give. For us to do the right thing, we have to put foam Boom. on it. Boom. So. Well, if you want a 
uh, honest pint with a good amount of foam on the top. You want to get to Blind Lady Ale House this weekend for Adams Avenue Street Fair so that you can try out our collaboration beer. That's 91X. Uh, automatic Brewing and Fall Brewing. The three of us came together. We made a beer dry, a double dry hops uh, IPA. You can get it at Blind Lady Ale House, Tiger Tiger, and Panama 66. It will be available this weekend for Adams Avenue Street Fair. And remember, a portion of those proceeds are going to go to the John Adams Elementary School because they're going to build a community garden. How awesome is that? Kids are going to dig that. Yeah. We're, we're keeping it there in the neighborhood. Lee, thank you so much for yeah. coming on Beer for Breakfast. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you for having making me. a beer with us. Just everything. Yeah, stoked. You guys this are is phenomenal. really fun. We'll we dig it. Again. Uh, remember, Friday, on Saturday, 91X will be live broadcasting from Blind Lady Ale House for the Adams Avenue Street Fair. Please come by, say hi, have an honest pint of beer, have a pizza. Uh, I dig Blind Lady during Adams Avenue Street Fair because it's nice to get out of the sun a little right. bit, mm -hmm. get cool for a second, Lots of get AC. back out mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it gets hot sometimes. Just a smidge, just a smidge. Uh, thank you so and much for try watching. Try one of whatever these beers are going to be named. Yeah. Yes. Come right, for the right name. There. Yeah. Oh, gosh, if you have any name ideas, please let us know because we're all, we're all kind of hitting the wall on this one. The, I kind of like the MacGyver. Uh, thank you so much. Remember, you can Little find guy, previous episodes of Beer for Breakfast ABV at 91x.com. Uh, this Friday, Paul will be on the 91x Morning Show Straight telling up. us what we should be drinking. And I'm telling you right now, we will be drinking automatic brewing beer, and uh, you should be too. Mm -hmm. So cheers to independently owned craft beer. Cheers. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh no. What? All right. <laughs> Fixed. This is this is this is an a modern times issue. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. You know I'm with the D R E. Yeah yeah yeah. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Cheers. 91X.